I find that in my work because when I'm doing something, it leads me to do something else. So I may start off with one thing and then it leads me into another area that I hadn't thought of before. An example is the jewelry that I'm using that I'm doing now. Is that that, that would never have happened if I had not have uh, worked with someone who introduced me to steampunk. And I did research on that, I, I bought a book on it, I, I started doing, just playing around with the idea of using the, some of the techniques I found in the book. Now if I had not have done that, if I had not have had that little camp, um, I never would have, probably never would have done the jury. Of course, you know, I was working with polymer clay, but not to that extent. And the other thing is that, another th example of that is um, a lady came in uh, who wanted me to, she was looking for somebody to teach, um, or how, she was really looking for somebody to teach her how or show her how to do face beads. And I researched it and we decided that you could do face beads with clay. And so I did, you know, I did research on that. Then I had a friend who already did um, clay, and he just kind of experimented with doing the face beads. And lo and behold, I taught her to do the face beads and all that. On, on the other hand, I got into doing a, a, an actual face bead too, and I did a face bead necklace. Well, I had the beads. Now I'm taking the beads from the face bead necklace I made. I made two of them, so I t I'm taking one apart and I'm doing beads with the face beads by using wrap. I'm wrapping um, and doing decorative wire around the beads and I'm using those as part of the jewelry that I'm repurposing. Um, I just find the creative process fascinating. So one thing always leads to another. It's a never ending process. figures that I'm doing um, actually started off with, I was looking at my work in the past, I did some sketches for like a retro 60s kind of a theme, and I was looking at the figures and I was taking pictures of them, um, and also because I'm doing this little fashion camp, I was watching Project Runway and watching the, 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 um, the designers and they're, they were kind of doing sketches of the work that they were creating for their fashion for the fashion show. And I remember when I was in school, I was just fascinated with with uh, fashion illustration. In fact, wanted to do that as a as a career. I started, you know, when I was sitting there watching Project Runway, I just started sketching and really had I was just having fun. And the next thing I knew. I was just doing lots of sketches, and then, of course, I came in the next day, and I thought, well, I think I'll do this as a painting, and I did. And then I thought, oh, I think I'll do this as a series. And now I'm doing different ones for Flynn's, and I'm probably gonna do four of those. So that's how it works. I mean, everything, everything leads to another thing, something else. And so now I'm not I'm never bored for sure. Because no, how could you be bored? How could you be bored? And of course my work with the kids, and you know, that's that keeps me creative too. So I'm never bored. I don't know. I don't think I'll ever stop. You know, it's like I don't think of retiring or anything like that. I mean, why would you want to retire? Because um, I think.
think that's a death sentence for people when they retire. You know, Georgia O'Keeffe did her work till she was 90. I figure I can do mine till I'm 100. And there's a lady, there's a lady that's a real inspiration also that's like living in a nursing home and she paints. You know, I think even if I have to go that way, um, I will do my art, hopefully. Hopefully if, if I can maintain my ability to see and maintain my ability to um, use my hands, then I'll do my art, hopefully. And that's an example of continuing what you love. I think that as people get older, it's really, it's important to develop that when you're younger, to develop something else besides your job. You need to develop a passion because when you're no longer able to work, um, you have to think about what you're going to do to keep your soul alive. I think when people lose the, the ability to contribute in some way or to create in some way, um, that's when people die. And I also believe that, that um, Creating is a wonderful way to keep, to stay young and working with kids and working with doing and being creative is, keeps me young. And I figure also if, if Matisse, Henry Matisse, you know, he continued his art even though he was very ill in his last part of his life. His passion continued and, and evolved into something besides painting. He no longer could paint, so he decided to do collage. And he still continued creating. I think I can do that too. So, I think I'm ready to quit for the day. I don't want to overwork. So, this is what it looks like so far. And um, I think it's good to have objectivity to your um, work. So, therefore, I know if you quit and work on something other than what you're doing, and then go back to it, you can see it better and have objectivity. So the next thing I'm going to be working on is um, the, the next thing I'm going to be working on is this painting using, using a sketch and creating one of my abfab girls. This is some of my my jewelry that I'm also working on for my my jewelry line. And as you can see, these are different kinds of things, different things that I use for creating the jewelry, making the jewelry. This is uh, a piece that I did that's that's um, fused glass. And I had this fused glass that I was not using as a fused glass piece that I had saved. Um, so I incorporated it into my jewelry. And this is a this is just a plain um, little tray that I found at a thrift store and a some kind of a little clock or actually it was I think I don't know what this thing was. But anyway, 